Which is the better operating system for music production, Mac or Windows? I'm going to give you a third option here, and I'm going to say Linux might be the best operating system for music production. And I'll show you why I love it so much. Versatility is the first thing. You can route any signal from anywhere to anywhere else, no problem at all. Unlike in Mac or Windows where you've got to, you've got to do all sorts of stuff to route things around the place. This one here is called Cadence. And there are other programs as well that you can use if you prefer the layout of another program. Cadence is the one that I use. And you can set up your buffer size, your sample rate, all of that stuff, and it all works globally. So on any programs that you open on your system, it's going to use Cadence. Inside Cadence, there's a thing called Katia. And this is where I think the power really comes from. That Capture 4, that's the microphone that I'm using, which is right here. That's running into ZD OBS Mic 2. So that's why you can hear it right now. You can see this going up and down as I talk. I can give it a bit more power. Here we go. I'll bring it down a bit. So you can see that there's other inputs there as well. I've got another mic input or another ZD OBS. I can set up as many as I like in OBS because that's the nature of the program. If I want to open a DAW and make some music and add that signal into OBS, for example, that's very easily done. As soon as I open the DAW, it doesn't come automatically into OBS. But what I can do is I can open it up in here. Bitwig Studio, here it is. The left and right outs. And I can put them into ZD OBS there. So then when I play it back. You're able to hear it in there when I pull the fader up. But even when the fader is down there, I can still hear it in my headphones, which is really handy. If I want to route some audio from one DAW into another, I can do that too. So let's open up waveform. It's getting a bit more complex. Bear in mind that normally when not recording into OBS, then these three wouldn't be here. This Eddie OBS, this vocal and this, they wouldn't be there. So it wouldn't look quite as complex. So here we go. Bitwig Studio into waveform one and two. It should happen now that when we play from Bitwig, it'll play in waveform. Let's close down some things. Close down Bitwig. Now, so when we've done that, Bitwig automatically leaves the window of Katya and you're left with a simpler setup. And it's not just DAWs and it's not just Jack stuff that you can do. If, for example, I wanted to get a video or anything from the internet, for example, I could route the audio from a YouTube video. This is one of my own YouTube videos, by the way. And I could route that straight into waveform. And in the case of the YouTube video, it's going to come from that Pulse Audio Jack Sync. So I'll do that one and two. And there it is, recorded straight from a YouTube video. Another thing that I love about using Linux for music production is the sheer amount of free software that's available. I'm using Manjaro, but there's loads of different flavors of Linux, as they call them. But Manjaro, or any other one that's based on Arch, has got Pac-Man, or in the case of Manjaro, it's Pamek. If we go down to Pro Audio here, look at this. So many free things. And that, that goes down and down and down and down. Honestly. And they're all right there in the one place. It's so good. And amazing stuff like Helm is an amazing synth. Pure Data is really good. Personally, I used Max MSP for a long time on, on a Mac, but Pure Data is pretty much the same thing. Set B free, loads of plugins, EQs and all that stuff. So much there, it's amazing. I think that the version of MuseCore that's available here is older than the one that you'd get if you download it from 
the MuseScore site. I haven't had much need for MuseScore in a while, but I will be getting onto that soon. So there's Cadence, and Katerina, Katia. These CAF plugins, there's loads and loads of them. All sorts of effect plugins. Audacity. Again, I think that's an old version. You can easily download the one from the site. I think some of the Linux community were just having some issues with Muse Group between MuseScore and Audacity. But I hope sometime to get to the bottom of that. And I'd love to have Tantacruel on the, on the channel to talk to me about that at some time. Because I know a lot of the guys who were on Linux, they were mostly Audacity users, and they mostly used it for podcasting and stuff like that. They probably weren't aware of MuseScore and the changes that came to MuseScore after Tantacruel got his hands on it. I think he did a fabulous job on it, to be honest. A lot of great changes. So hopefully he'll come on sometime and talk to me. We'll see about that. Keep an eye on the channel. If you're on Manjaro or Garuda or any Arch-based system, or Arch, for example, then the AUR is absolutely amazing because you don't have to worry about any of these PPAs or any of that stuff. I love the simplicity of the Archway. One hurdle you may come across in an Arch-based system is you might try to figure out how do I install different types of packages. Like if something is only downloadable as a deb file, for example. Well, I'll tell you, debtap. Debtap is your friend. You have to install debtap, but once you do, it's great. For example, I installed Mini Rays recently. A really good synth comes as a deb, and what you got to do is right click in here, open terminal. That opens it in the Mini Rays folder. If you've got debtap installed in your system already, then it's simply a matter of this. Look, debtap. You can write the whole thing out, or you can just use a star like that. Once you've done that, I've done that already. So the outcome of that comes to here and it gives you a new package that you double click and it installs it with your native installer PAMEC. That just makes stuff so easy. Next thing I want to say about using Linux as, as a music production machine is the simplicity of, of upgrading things. You basically upgrade everything at the click of a button. If you're into using terminal, and I'd recommend it, I'd recommend that you get into it because a lot of things can happen, can get done really quickly on Terminal, and you can see everything that's going on. sudo pacman syyu. And when I hit that, put in my password. And it'll take a few minutes, it'll download all of the details of what needs to be installed. And it gives me a big long list like that. I can scan through it and see if there's anything that I don't want to upgrade just yet. It tells me my size, total installed size, net upgrade size. So you see here, like I often wondered that about upgrades and updates and stuff on Windows and Mac. When does it end? How You keep on adding new layers and so you're just filling up your hard drive with rubbish that you don't want. With this you know exactly what you're getting. And in this case, it's going to take away some of the stuff off my hard drive. And I'm going to end up this much less than what I was. So I'm going to hit no so that I can show you the other version of upgrading. If the terminal scares you, this package manager is your alternative. And in here, it gives me all of these. I'm not going to upgrade anything just now because uh, I'm recording right now. <laughs> oh, the other thing that you need to do is if you've got stuff in the AUR, then yay. <laughs> And then it asks you for your password and give you the upgrade for any of the stuff that's in yay as well. Now, I'm not going to do that just now either. There are some downsides to using Linux as your music production operating system. One of them is that you have to let go of some of your software because it's not supported. And in, uh, for the most part, it's not that Linux couldn't handle the software. It's that the other company doesn't have the resources to create Linux versions of it because at the moment the Linux market share is very very small. So things I had to let go of were Reason Studios, Waves Plugins, Contact, Complete, Ableton Live, Logic Pro, but I mean any Windows user already understands that Logic Pro is just a Mac system. The plus side of all of that was I got to dig around and find a, find some alternatives to all of this stuff. For example, instead of Logic Pro I now use Waveform. Instead of Ableton Live, I found Bitwig, and Bitwig is um, phenomenal as well. Waveform is phenomenal. As well as both of those, I discovered Harrison Mixbus. That's an amazing place for mixing. I feel like I've gained so much more than I've lost. If I have the patience for it, I can learn all about Wine, which is a program that you can use to install Windows programs on your Linux system. If you're a Reaper user, then you can use Reaper natively in Linux as well. Lots of stuff is there. 
and media overkill mock mok they've got wave razor they've got mini rays they've got a lot of other plugins there's uh synths synths there's a whole load of synths a whole load of, a whole load of synthesizers <laughs> there's a whole load of synth <laughs> there's a whole load of synthesizers as well like um vital that's a fantastic one matt title he's um he's created some great ones helm is this other one there's so much on here but one thing i'll have to say is if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to troubleshoot and doesn't like to figure stuff out or manually do things then maybe linux wouldn't be for you because you really do have to do that sort of stuff but to be honest i've broken my mac system i've broken windows systems because i tend to tinker with stuff and i tend to look down into the thing try to find the details try to learn about what's happening underneath or try to tweak things and with linux i can do that easily and if anything goes amiss then i can usually figure out how to how to fix the little details instead of reinstalling the whole system which which i'd have to do in windows or in mac so i love it if you're using linux i'd love to hear from you or if you're if you're interested in getting into it and if if I can help you in any way, let me know. There's lots of forums out there, Facebook groups as well, subreddits, all of this kind of stuff. And uh, it's well worth a try. And I decided initially that I was going to try it for a month or two. And if I didn't like it, I'd just install Windows on my new machine. But I found myself using Linux about 90, 95% of the time. And then recently I managed to break my, <laughs> I managed to break my Windows partition. So um, I keep breaking Windows, so I'm sticking on Linux. I might try it again sometime in the future, see if I break it again. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, keep an eye on the channel. From time to time, I'll stick up some Linux related stuff, but know that pretty much all of the stuff that I do on this channel is Linux. So, Shinna will. See you soon.